First of all, uh, my name is Stephen McCartney. I'm Floyd Bush. And uh, we decided to name ourselves The Limit, and we decided to call our project, Project Eclipse, because originally we were thinking he did a cool backpack. This was our problem statement. It was uh, many people today use backpacks for many purposes, but on hot days their backs press fire, and on cold days they have no way to keep warm. So on a hot day you're probably just walking around with your backpack on during the summer. Like you have books always walking around. As soon as you take it back off, your back is sweaty usually. Uh, Team norms. Uh, these were just some some good points and some some ground rules. Um, one major one major thing was uh, don't don't get caught up in one little thing. Um, we didn't really have any problems in our in our last point. Do it upright. We we really did try to do this in a in a way that was that was good at least for you know a, fir a first generation prototype. Just for our survey questions we had, I think it was uh, five basic questions. Um, just It was just kind of validation for if this was a product that would be needed so we could go ahead and do this project or we'd have to pick a different path. Um, and our first question was to the people, do you frequently use your backpack in your everyday life? And the majority of them said yes. It's almost even though. Second one, whenever they did use a backpack with their backs overheated for expire, and that was uh, two thirds of the majority saying yes. Um, same thing, except we asked um, on the cold days, you wish your backpack had something to keep you warm. Um, majority said that they would. We asked them, you know, if, if we were to design a backpack like that, how would they, how would they want it? And um, everyone, the vast majority said they wanted both because, you know, everybody likes to have options. And um, we did want to do a price survey. Um, most of the people really prefer between 30 to $50. Um, which that that'd be a reasonable price for a full backpack, honestly. Uh, this was our decision matrix. This was how we ourselves decided how to rate our backpack on the different parts of what we could use for it. Uh, the pelt tier, the pelt tier, we decided for a heat would end up being a five, which means it would produce a good amount of heat. Cool, five, both, both of them together, if you could switch back and forth, be a good five. Uh, the price, uh, we decided to go for one, it costs a good amount, it was moving around. Um, well for, I think for one that's a couple, a few millimeters by a few millimeters, I mean it's close to 20 or 30 dollars and you need one that was probably at least close to a square foot. Um, the efficiency to, so a total, a total score of what we decided out of 30 would be a 22. Um, want to do the next part? Well, yeah, the, the uh, laptop cooler and the heating pad, uh, the heating pad that we plan on using uh, had variable control set. The heat was a five. Uh, the laptop cooler, which is what we have on that backpack, I mean, it's it's not going to be as ice cold as what you'd have if you had a Peltier device. But 
If you have it against your back, it's going to keep you cool. Especially with one of those lithium ion non bolts against it, it, it puts out pretty good. Uh, so you average both those together and you've got the four. The price, the price is going to be about average for a heating pad and the laptop floor actually wasn't wasn't that bad together. Aesthetics, um, we did, we we had the aesthetics as a four because there's there's ways that you could make that look better than what we have it. We didn't want to cut into the backpack or put it into the lining of the backpack because we didn't want to have the backpack coming apart on us from the inside. Um, and then the efficiency, of course, is a is a three. Uh, it's it's a little better than the Peltier. Um, we'll get to the results of that later. And the, the AdVision Star, which is why we chose the, the laptop for, um, got a, I contacted a uh, man that's, that works in the Peltier industry, um, and he said that for us to use a Peltier just wouldn't be feasible. This was our Gantt chart. Decided practically the brainstorming and the surveys and the designs would take a total of probably when we started, which was on 16th, to about 27th. Um, the purchase materials, that's we just went out one day and decided we'd get together and purchase our materials, so that took just a little bit. Um, building and prototyping, that took a little bit longer in this. It was probably a good four or five days longer than what we well, officially decided. Yeah, it was, it was a little bit longer than that just to get building prototype. Um, technically, like the last day would have been the 5th of December because that's when we ran the battery test. And then, of course, the last part is the presentation today. Uh, th this is our like patent research. Um, Really, the, the links to, to different ideas that we found that incorporated a backpack, but none of them, none of them were really had storage with them. Had the use of that item plus the storage of a regular backpack. The closest thing that we found was a um, a it was a backpack that was made for heating pads, like for people that have back problems, and you could put heating pads in several different pockets. Um, there was this a, a cooling backpack that was just kind of a fan, and there was no storage to it. So really the idea from what we can tell is it is original. There was schematics of our design. This was the uh, laptop cooler. Down there is the battery. Had a push button on the side. Right here is the cooler. Um, this was for the heating pad, the potentiometer. That's what we decided we put in so we could find out about it. Um, battery, nine volts. More designs. This was uh, official designs of how the backpack would look by the end of our building. Um, Put the toggle switch in, battery has a wire runs right over into it. Turn it on. Um, here was the heating pad, which we unfortunately could not officially accomplish in putting on the backpack because the issue of how many batteries it would take to power it. So um, we did have to drop the heating pad. The, the reason that he said, like, he stayed with the, uh, the batteries, uh, Mr. Tyler, the electronics teacher here, he gave me the uh, conversion from AC to DC, and we plugged it in, and you, you'd have to have, I think it was close to 77 volts of power to be able to run that heating pad. And that's going to be nine nine-volt batteries. So, I mean, that's completely un unfeasible. Um, <coughs> Full security. I mean, it's it's secured by straps. Um, there's there's a lot more R and D that could obviously go into this into this project. Um, the battery duration. That laptop for uh, it ran a Energizer 
lithium ion nine volt battery uh, to where it wouldn't be feasible for you to have the one. It was in between, it was around an hour and 40 minutes. Because um, Drew tested it for us after it was starting to get weak, and in an hour and 40 minutes, by that time, it was it was no longer useful to have it on. So, like I said, there's still a lot more R&D that we can do with this project. Um, public opinion with the, the surveys and even um, our marketing surveys, um, I think each of us did one. That's why you have the asterisks up there because, you know, you, you do have a little bit of inventor's bias within the surveys. Results and conclusions. Uh, for results and conclusions, we let people try on the backpack, see how they liked it, and we asked them these three main questions. Can you feel the air from the cooler? Uh, would you buy this product? And is the cooler uncomfortable? Which, as you can see, almost nobody said it was uncomfortable, and everybody practically said they would buy it. So, um, majority of people could feel the cooler. A few people could not. But what what we had with that was obviously if you're going to have the cooler on, it's going to be in the summertime. Yeah. Um, and I, I think both the people that we had tested that said that they couldn't feel it was, uh, they had big jackets, jackets on. on. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, the, we think it's, it's an overall success. Um, but again, like I said, the, the research and development side of it, um, finding, you know, would, would maybe two 9 volts put together, run that, run the uh, cooler long enough to, to be able to wear it for a feasible time, like if you if you were hiking or, or something like that all day, as opposed to just being in and around school. Um, pro proposed design alterations that goes along with it. Um, like we said about putting the cooler in the backpack, so that way it's looking more aesthetically pleasing. And then marketing of product goes back to what I said earlier. You have just a slight bit of inventor's bias within that. And then th these are the resources of um, the patents that we looked up and anything that we had to use. Yeah. Special thanks to uh, Mr. Cutler, Mr. Tyler, and James Bush, Mary Sue McCartney, Wiseman, Project Lead the Way, Project Lead the Way, and then investors and surveys. Survey. Um, yeah. I, I really, uh, on, the, on the special thanks part, I can thank my, my grandparents. They, they uh, helped us out a lot. They, were, I, they would just ask, ask us, and um, they actually were the ones that, that bought the laptop for Like, we were going to wait, we were going to get all this sorted out, but they were at Big Loss, and they found that it's a Target's brand laptop cooler. Good brand, $10. So they got it. I mean... That's our presentation. Thank you.